Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the water. This happening just around 1.30 this morning. We are hearing reports that at least seven people and several vehicles have fallen into the water below. Stay with Fox 45. We have exclusive live team coverage all morning long with crews on the scene as we speak. We do have some video now, uh, some footage from the nearby area. You can obviously see Fox 45 News first on the scene. We have Olivia Dance out there right now, live near the Key Bridge. Olivia, what are you seeing? Well, we're seeing a lot of first responders. So this is Fort Armistead Road. Key Bridge is just up this way on Fort Armistead Road. And I mean, there's an emergency vehicle going down, speeding off right now. We've seen several police cars speeding that way just a minute ago. So this is as close as we can get. Um, again, we're just seeing a lot of first responders and from a lot of jurisdictions too. So if we pan over to our left, you can see city of Baltimore. Fire crews are here. I saw Hartford County, um, obviously Baltimore County. So there are a lot of crews responding here. The Maryland Transportation Authority said that a ship hit the key bridge causing it to collapse. So right now that is what we have confirmed and as Megan mentioned uh, the AP is reporting that emergency responders are currently looking for seven people in the water possibly multiple vehicles in the water as well of course hoping that they are going to be okay. And 305 Authority Drive is where uh, authorities will be giving a media update. That's in Dundalk, so about 20 minutes away from where we are, but we have a crew going that way. So hoping to get some more information here in just a little bit. But uh, really right now it is all hands on deck. And as you can see, this is as close as we can get and all the roads in this area are closed off. Back to you guys. Understandably, Olivia, we're going to be checking in all morning long. Thank you for that update. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for waking up with us on this Tuesday, March 26th. I'm Megan Gilland taking a look at the traffic map that we have here this morning. This is where the Francis Scott Key Bridge again spans over the, the Patapsco River there. We have team coverage all morning long for you of the Key Bridge collapsing. We are bringing you the latest information all morning long. Uh, we just checked in with Olivia Dance right there. We heard what she is seeing here this morning. Uh, I know that we have a tag board as well as what I'm getting word that we have so much reaction coming into our newsroom here this morning here. We've got videos, we've got pictures coming in, kind of painting the picture of what we've been seeing overnight here. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull up that tag board here this morning. Um, as we work on getting that for you, we know that if you usually take the key bridge, you will need to find uh, another route here this morning. Taking a look at what this means for you, the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel. Uh, this is going to be, at, or the Fort McHenry Tunnel. They will be the other ways that you can get across the Patapsco River this morning. Again, everywhere around the Key Bridge now closed here this morning as crews are doing uh, really a search and rescue mission right now. Be mindful. More people than usual will probably be on those alternative routes. So keep that in mind if you are getting up and, and heading out here this morning. The 695 Francis Scott Key Bridge over the Patapsco River spanned 1.6 miles. Construction began, just a little history, in 1972, and the bridge opened in March of 1977. Scholars believe that the span crosses within 100 yards of the site where Francis Scott Key witnessed the bombardment of Fort McHenry on the evening of September 12th. That was 1814. The battle inspired Key to write the words of the Star Spangled Banner. In a city in crisis now this morning, we are taking a closer look at the claims that Baltimore City Mayor Brandon Scott made in his State of the City address. City services, youth engagement and public safety. The mayor pointing to his group violence reduction strategy as the driving force behind the drop in homicides and shootings. With the city regularly seeing more than 300 Baltimoreans killed every year, something had to give. So we got to work outlining and then implementing Baltimore's first ever comprehensive violence prevention plan. Now, even though the mayor says crime is being addressed, we talk to community residents who say crime is their biggest concern and they want to see change. You go to bed, wake up, somebody don't got shot, they got killed. Yeah, ain't no homicides down. I feel like the police hands are tied in, in the city, in the, in the current administration, the leadership is not supporting them. You know, we are the future of Baltimore, and, and how is the future of Baltimore going to be good if you can't do anything to help, help us? 
Residents say they plan on voting in the upcoming mayoral election to make their voices heard. The primary is coming up in May. Mayoral candidate Sheila Dixon weighing in on the mayor's state of the city address. She's giving the credit for the drop in homicides to city state's attorney Ivan Bates. In a tweet, she says, when our chief prosecutor tells us he's frustrated with the lack of support from City Hall, it tells me law enforcement needs a new partner in the mayor's office. That brings us to our question of the day. Do you think Mayor Brandon Scott deserves a second term? So far, 99% of people who voted say no. You can head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. It is 4.05 here this morning. Again, we started early with the breaking news of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the water below, taking a, a live look from that situation right there. We've got live crews on the scene. We're going to be back with much more. It's 4.05 on Fox 45 Early Edition. We are coming to you early this morning again with some breaking news here this morning. Check this out. This is video of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the water early this morning. Again, we are getting reports that at least seven people, several vehicles have fallen into the water below. Stay with Fox 45. We have exclusive live team coverage all morning long with crews that are on the scene right now. Continuing coverage now this morning, a Baltimore mother is demanding justice after her 16-year-old son was gunned down in Cherry Hill. The mother sharing this video of the horse-drawn carriage carrying her son, 16-year-old Cormar Askins, to his final resting place. The Baltimore Police Department say they found Askins shot multiple times in Cherry Hill back in February. No word yet on a motive or any information on a suspect. His mother says she's been left with many unanswered questions. My main thing is why. When children are doing something wrong, you don't have to pull out a gun. You know, there's other ways of handling situations instead of handling it how way that you feel like you want to handle it. An $8,000 reward is being offered in this case. Anyone with information is asked to call police. A new report from Baltimore City's Comptroller finds the city's nonprofits are not paying their fair share in property taxes. The report points to a 10 year program called Payment in Lieu of Taxes, with the city's 14 largest medical facilities and universities. Under the program, the city exempts them from certain taxes in exchange for their services for their nonprofits provide. The report says they pay $6 million in annual property taxes. They would otherwise bring in $108 million. Taxpayer advocate David Williams saying residents are the ones making up the difference. Baltimore City has one of the highest property taxes in Maryland and really in the nation. And this needs to be addressed because there needs to be a solution where nonprofits are paying their fair share and people that are just you know, struggling to get by don't have to pay an excessive property tax rate. Fox 45 News has reached out to a majority of those nonprofits. So far, we have not received any response. Now to counties under pressure. A compliance board has found Harford County Executive Bob Castley's administration in violation of the Maryland Public Information Act surrounding the decision to halt funding for a police training academy. According to the county sheriff's office, Castley employed an architecture firm to conduct a feasibility test on the planned construction site. The firm rejected the site. The sheriff's office claims Castley promised the firm a more lucrative project if they rejected the site. They also asked Castley's administration for any recorded interactions with the firm, but those records were never sent. Castley's office has not commented on the report, but in the past, Castley has accused Sheriff Jeffrey Gaylor of malicious attacks, saying funding for the police training academy is not within the county's budget. The Orioles have a big week ahead of them after the break. The developments on the potential O's ownership change. It's a newer kind of research in cancer that looks not just at cells, but those that escape. I'm Liz Bonus. We explain just ahead. But first, here's what's ahead this morning on the National Desk. I'm Angela Brown. This morning on the National Desk, how TikTok is impacting the border crisis. The former head of Border Protection joins us to discuss. That's this morning on the National Desk, America's News Now, weekday mornings. You can watch the National Desk on our sister station, the CW Baltimore, weekdays from 6 to 9 a.m. 
It is 4:11, and you are taking a live look from our harbor shot. Where in the distance you would normally be able to see the Francis Scott Key Bridge. That bridge collapsing just after 1:30 this morning. Emergency crews live on the scene there as you take a live look there. We have crews stationed all around that situation, bringing you the latest all morning long. It's 4:12 on Fox 45 Early Edition. We come to you early this morning with breaking news. Live team coverage this morning on that, that big overnight story of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. We are bringing you the latest information all morning long. In fact, right now, we want to go back out live to the scene. Olivia Dan standing by. Olivia, a lot of emergency crews on the scene. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Well, Megan, we're hearing a lot of sirens. We've been hearing sirens, and we've also been seeing uh, emergency vehicles speed up down this road. This is Fort Armistead Road, and it is currently closed. Really, all the, the roads in this area are closed, but the key bridge, to give you some perspective, is only about a mile from where this road closure is. And again, this is as close as we can get, but there's some people here that are just stopping and trying to figure out what is going on. What we do know right now, though, is that a ship hit the key bridge, causing it to collapse. And um, there are several first responders are currently looking for seven people in the water. Possibly several vehicles went into the water during that collapse as well. So, of course, hoping that they're going to be OK. Uh, we also know that we're going to get um, an update from crews here in just a little bit. That's going to be over in Dundalk, and we have Shannon Lilly and our crew heading that way. So hoping to get some more information right now, but really that's about all we know. And again, this is, is as close as we can get. We've seen um, crews from several jurisdictions here. We see city of Baltimore just over to our left. There's a fire crew here. I've seen Harford County. I've seen several special operations crews. Uh, they're letting a vehicle go through right now. But really, this road is closed to the general public and really only emergency vehicles are going through right now. So we'll continue to keep you updated as we learn more. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Olivia will be checking back in. Thank you for that report. And just to give you a, a better picture of where Olivia is and, and what's happening right there, this is our live traffic map from the Francis Scott Key Bridge. As I zoom in, you can see obviously that situation is closed. We're in the red there. All around that area now is going to be impacted. So imagine as the morning continues, we're going to see those red delays continue around this area. Uh, MDA, a lot of folks saying that your best bet if you're getting up early this morning and traveling, the other tunnels might might be your best option, but already here this morning, you can see those those live traffic updates in the red. Um, a lot of delays here coming in this morning. A lot of videos as well. We want to share some of these with you as, as many people waking up to this news here. This is on uh, tag board here this morning. You can see this is coming from raw alerts here, Roz alerts here, and it says mass casualty has been declared after a large container ship, look at that, collides with a key bridge, causing it to completely collapse there. Uh, this one goes on to say numerous agencies, including the Coast Guard, Fire Department, declaring a mass casualty incident. As you can imagine, we've got a cargo ship that, that has just crashed into a, a bridge here. We know search and rescue underway as they try to determine exactly how many people were, were on that bridge at the time, getting reports, as you heard Olivia mentioned that they are looking for seven people below. As we look at some of the uh, reaction coming in here this morning, we've got another one here. This is uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, which crosses the Patapsco River, reportedly collapsed in the last few minutes. Someone posting this uh, by a container ship. And this is that video here. We've got this actually posted on our website as well, foxbaltimore.com. The moment that container ship actually collides with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The, if you're looking at this right here, guys, that, that co uh, container ship was actually on the left-hand side. You see it right there behind the, the pillar of the bridge there. There's the moment of impact. And then at that moment, you see just that entire bridge come crashing down into the water below. All right, let's take a look at one more here this morning. Uh, the mayor writing in saying, I'm aware of and en route to the incident at the Key Bridge. I have been in contact with the Baltimore Fire Chief. Uh, the governor talks about Johnny O and Arundel County Executive. Emergency personnel are on scene. Efforts are underway. And obviously, we have been taking those live shots from Olivia. We know Shannon is on scene as well. We've got our photographers stationed around as well, giving you uh, an update. Again, this is a serious situation. As we know, seven people are now unaccounted for. They're being searched for in the water below. That is the, the early reports that we're getting right now. And, and also the, the impacts this is going to have historically, a bridge that's been there for, for nearly 50 years. And for, for all of you getting up this morning and, and trying to get around with a, a major section now, not there. 
anymore. Again, several crews from our station now on the scene. Producer Maggie Abara is there right now. She is joining us live on the phone. Maggie, you were one of the first to arrive there. What are you seeing? What is the, the, the situation out there right now? Uh, yeah, they've got a few blockades set up. They had to set up two blockades. There's one um, pretty much at Hawkins Point, and then there's another one further on down. I was able to make my way towards uh, the second one, um, and then as I was coming back, I noticed that people were trying to break through the first blockade, drivers who were eager to get to wherever they think they're going to go now that there's not a bridge there. Mm -hmm. um, they were driving around the blockade, going up the wrong, you know, the wrong side of the road. One man just started trucking it right down the street. No vehicle, just had a shirt on. I don't know what the thought process was there because he was really cold, and I, um, it's really cold outside. And I, I checked with the, with the authorities who had set up the blockade. I think they're mostly MTA workers. They said he was not with them. So a, a lot of tension around this area right now. Maggie, when you say the, the blockade's on 695 before you get to the bridge, is that, is that where they're setting those up? Uh, it's right. There's one right at the Royal Farms where uh, Hawkins Point. Yep. Yeah, right. The Hawkins Point Royal Farm is where the first one is, and then there's another one further in. And I, producers in the back actually have that pulled up on my um, computer right now. So if you want to take a look at exactly what Maggie's talking about, this is Hawkins Point right before you get to the bridge right there. That's where she's saying the first blockade is. And Maggie, that's where we're seeing that the traffic is starting to back up. Do you see a lot of traffic? It's 419 in the morning. Are, are people trying to, to get to other places or is this more people coming and trying to figure out what's going on? Uh, people are coming to the blockade. There's not a ton of traffic just yet, but very uh, few resentful drivers. Um, wow. Mostly I see people turning around, and when they do, just kind of parking here at the Royal Farms, not exactly knowing how to move forward. And obviously, you know, this is uh, impacting a lot of people going to work, but this is a search and rescue mission that is underway right now for people in the water below. In terms of emergency vehicles, are you seeing movement not just, you know, for vehicles on the road trying to, to get to that situation, but in the water? Can you see, you know, rescue boats below or Coast Guard action? Uh, they, they don't even, they have it blocked off to the point where no one, if you're not a, a, you know, a first responder or expected in your emergency vehicle, you can't even get to the point where you can sure. see anything. So um, they, they've got all sorts of agencies responding here, the Baltimore Police Department, they've got boats and everything. It does look like the rescue operation or an effort for one is underway, but uh, you can't even get close enough to see them Perform, you know, performing their duties. It's just incredible. All right, Maggie, we thank you for your time. We're going to be checking back in with you. Thank you for, for everything. Be safe out there. As again, she mentioned drivers who are not being as patient uh, as perhaps they should in this kind of a situation here. I want to go back out live to the scene here this morning. We have Shannon Lilly out there right now. Shannon, tell us where you're sta stationed here. We see flashing lights behind you and, and what the situation mm -hmm. is there. Yeah, so we are in Dundalk, Megan. We're on Authority Drive. And, and when we arrived here, quite a chilling statement from one of the MDTA employees who told us that I can let you get a straight shot uh, of, of the bridge, essentially, but there's not much that you're going to be able to see because there's not much left. In fact, if you take a look here behind us, still dark, but just down this road here is where the Francis Scott Key Bridge was. We know a major portion of it is now no longer there. Uh, there are, are a lot of um, emergency crews that are here on the scene, and, and we do know that at least seven people either were being rescued or still are being rescued. We know that multiple vehicles fell into the water after this large vessel, this ship, uh, ran into, into the bridge around 1.30 this morning, crashed into the bridge, catching on fire um, before that, that ship sunk. And then it caused multiple vehicles to fall into the water below. Um, and there's just some some stunning images that you guys have been seeing come in on Twitter um, and X uh, of this event. I mean, just truly um, takes your breath away when you see it. But yeah, this morning, not much that we can see from here just because there's not much left really to see. Um, it, it is still dark. So as the sun comes up, we're probably going to get a, a better scope of this. But as you can see, definitely multiple emergency vehicles on the scene. And as we were trying to get here, you know, they have several roads blocked off. And so if you're not media, you can't even get this far. Um, so of course, we're going to stay out here. We do expect to get an update shortly. So as soon as we do, we're going to keep you guys posted and hopefully speak with more people who who have a, a an idea of, of just what 
happened and and uh, more about next steps after this. So, of course, we'll continue to keep you posted. All right, back we appreciate you. that, Shannon. Thank you very much. We want to go back live from another perspective. We have Olivia Dans. Olivia, what road are you on right now? Just so we can try and see. We saw Shannon uh, on the Dundalk side of things. Where are you standing? So, Megan, we're off of uh, Fort Armistead Road. So just about a mile this way is the key bridge. This road actually goes, I believe, underneath the bridge or parallel to it. So it doesn't take you right to the bridge, but the, the bridge is just a mile that way. And uh, this is about as close as we can go. You can see that the, there's several crews here blocking the road off. And actually, there's a lot of people out here just watching, trying to figure out what is going on. So we're going to go see if we can talk to some of them. <laughs> can, I, can I chat with you? How are you doing? What's your name? My name's Othman. Odman? Yeah. Um, okay, so you're you're here. When did you hear about what, what happened and what made you want to come out to this Royal Farms? And they told me, on? like, the bridge is broke down. I mean, I'm not sure, like, I'm going to see the truth or no. I was, like, in the home, chilling, noticing the Instagram, everything. They told me the bridge broke down. We just drive away, see if it's true or no. We found it's true. Y you were saying that you saw some video, and when you first saw it, you didn't think it was yeah, real. It was, it was fake. They told me well, it probably was fake. We want to try it to see it's fake. But since you pull up in there, it's sort of true for us. Do you typically travel this way? Do you usually have to go over the key bridge to get to work or anything? Yeah, sometimes well, we do keep working sometimes. Sometimes I work in Delaware. Nah, I'm scared right now if we go on the bridge and try the bridge no more. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's shocking. I mean, from, from, from the videos that you have seen and just what you've heard, what are you thinking right now? See, I feel bad for people who got to die, family, all the cracks. I mean, I feel bad for, like, all things. I feel bad for people who got charged to work. You got stuck there. Some teams right now, the school will be out. Right now, probably kids got stuck there without school or nothing, whole family. I don't know how I could do that for back home. Uh, hopefully, everybody be safely, everything. Yeah. I mean, glad that blast. I mean, I don't know for people, you go have whole family, whatever so happened to them. Yeah, it's just horrible. Thank you so much for speaking with us. And of course, we are, are really right now just hoping that everyone is going to be OK. We're, we're told that at least seven people are currently being rescued from the water, several vehicles possibly in the water as well. So I'm um, really just just hoping um, that all those people are going to be OK. I did just speak with a family that was here waiting. Um, they told me that their father in law was on the bridge when it collapsed. So right now they haven't been able to contact him. So really a lot of people just waiting around and um, we're hearing some stories about that so of course really the main thing right now is just making sure that everyone's okay but I'll send it back to you Megan cannot even imagine what that family is feeling right now watching and waiting uh, Olivia thank you we'll be checking back in with you thoughts and prayers for for that family impacted by all of this we are going to continue to to cover this live team coverage all morning long as that Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse those uh, rescue efforts uh, clearly still underway as we speak right now it is 425 here this morning we do want to get a check of your forecast here one of our producers Maggie on scene Justin mentioning that uh, the the cold out there this morning yeah temperatures are definitely chilly this morning Meg and we're seeing uh, very calm conditions out there right now not much in the way of wind and you can see See our current temperature in Towson at 37 degrees, that wind right there at zero. So not much wind to speak of, so no wind chill to deal with this morning. Those temperatures are a little bit warmer than where they were yesterday at this time, but 37 still obviously on the chilly side. You're going to see those temperatures that will climb as we head over the next couple of hours, but most of the morning, those temps will stay in the 30s, have a little bit more cloud cover that is rolled in. This is what we talked about yesterday, how we'll see more clouds around for the day today. And that's really getting us set for the next weather maker. Next 12 hours, temperatures climbing in the mid to upper 40s. We'll get into the lower 50s here in that 2 and 3 o'clock hour for this afternoon. And this time of year, we typically are in the mid to upper 50s. We're going to be a little bit cooler today. The low to mid 50s is what we are going to see. We only hit 53 yesterday. It was a real nice afternoon. But we will continue to see those temperatures that will be mainly in the 50s across central Maryland for your highs today. 56 in D.C., right about 50 in Philadelphia, 47 in Ocean City and 60 the temp down in Richmond to the south today. So those numbers are definitely a little bit on the cooler side of things than what we typically are this time of year. In terms of our temperature tracker, you can see those temps in the low to mid 50s Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday kind of right below that average line. But they do climb as we head into this upcoming weekend, which is Easter weekend. So we'll see those low to mid 60s, a little bit of a steady climb there, kind of an upward trend with our numbers, even as we head in toward next week.
week, which is going to be the first week of April. This is the final, these are the final couple of days of March, actually. All right, so here's a look at our future scan. We do have more of those cloud cover that's going to be around throughout the day today. Notice that next weather maker getting set up to the west of us. That's going to bring in some more rain showers as we get into the overnight hours. And by tomorrow morning, you'll have a few showers you'll have to contend with, especially in the second half of your commute. Those rain showers will be moving through by about 2, 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. So some scattered showers there. And unfortunately, you have to deal with some rain that's going to be with us early Thursday morning as well. This is going to be even more of that rain that's rolling up right as we get into opening day. And we'll see some of those showers that will be lingering through about 2, 3 o'clock on Thursday afternoon. But notice this kind of low is staying to the east. So hopefully we'll just have a few light showers and we won't have to deal with any cancellations or postponements for opening day, which of course is Thursday afternoon. So here's that seven day forecast temperatures in the 50s. As we mentioned over the next couple of days, we're back to the 60s as we head into the weekend should be dry for Easter weekend and just a tad bit warmer. Justin, thank you for that. Meantime, your lens solar traffic network here. We are following that breaking news of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. As a result here, we are seeing uh, if you normally take the bridge, you need to find an alternate route this morning. The Baltimore Harbor Tunnel or the Fort McHenry Tunnel will be the other ways you can get across the Patapsco River. Good morning to all of you. We begin with breaking news here. Take a look at your screen. What you're seeing there is the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the water around 1.30 this morning. This happened just three hours ago. We are hearing reports now that at least seven people and several vehicles have fallen into the water below. Stay with Fox 45. We have exclusive live team coverage for you all morning long. We've got crews on the scene right now. In fact, take a look uh, at this video right now. We have some uh, footage from the area nearby. Fox 45 News first to the scene as an ambulance, police truck and five trucks, fire trucks uh, arrived to that scene there. Live from WBFF in Baltimore. This is Fox 45 Early Edition. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for waking up with us on this Tuesday, March 26th. I'm Megan Gilland. We came on early this morning with that breaking news. We mentioned the live team coverage here on the overnight news of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. We are bringing you the very latest information all morning long, a very active scene out there. We want to go live to the scene with Olivia Dan. She just spoke with someone a little bit ago, uh, concerned that, that maybe they knew someone that was on the bridge. Olivia, what's going on? What, 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 what are people saying around you? Well, Megan, we're going to talk with um, someone here in just a second, but it is very emotional out here right now. I don't, uh, you know, I want to respect people's privacy, but there are several families, loved ones here that have not heard from their loved ones that they believe were potentially on the bridge when it collapsed. So um, obviously a lot of people just waiting to get answers right now and hoping that their loved ones are going to be okay. So it is, is emotional. We are off of um, Fort Armistead Road right now. This is as close as we can get. Yet the key bridge is just about a mile uh, further down this road. And since we've been here for about an hour. We've seen several first responders uh, from multiple jurisdictions speed off uh, with their sirens on heading down Fort Armistead Road. So uh, really very much still an active scene. But right here I have uh, Scott. Scott was woken up by your you were woken up by your wife this morning to this news. Yeah. Scott, what was going through your head when your when your wife woke you up? Um, I, cu I couldn't believe it. I mean, yeah. I was like, there's Pizza. no way. There's no way. Yeah. You know, and I figured First thing in my mind, here we go. It's getting ready to start. It's yeah. the only beginning of it. I mean, you, you've seen, you said you've seen some videos on social media and stuff. Yeah, I've seen a guy just flying a drone. But it's too dark right now. Really too dark, but I mean, Fort Armistead, said you probably can't get another car down there. And there's a couple dozen boats out there. I mean, the, some of the videos that we're seeing on social media, it, it doesn't even look real, but then you know it is real and it's, it's just shocking. Yeah. Shocking. I didn't see so many engines. I've seen them from D.C. and P.G. County. Yeah, we're seeing, uh, you know, first responders from all sorts of jurisdictions. Um, this is as close as we can get. About what time did you get out here, and, and what made you want to come out just to see what was going I on? To see what was going on, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, uh, I guess about two hours, two hours ago, yeah. I came out. Yeah. 
Yeah, really just shocking news to wake up to. Um, I appreciate you speaking with us. And obviously, you know, as I've said, really the main thing now is just, of course, making sure that uh, these families are going to be OK. We're, we're hearing uh, at least seven people being uh, currently trying to be rescued and multiple vehicles um, in the water. So uh, really just a devastating situation. And um, again, this is as close as we can get. But Megan, we will bring updates as soon as we have some more information. All right. Back to um, you. Yeah, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Where Olivia is standing is the, the Fort Armistead that's just past Hawkins Point. We want to go live now to Shannon Lilly. She's on the other side of where the bridge would have been, the Dundalk section right there. Mm -hmm. Shannon, I see again those flashing lights there behind you. Any update on the situation mm -hmm. from, from your perspective? No major update at this point, Megan. We are seeing more and more media arrive here, as you can imagine. Just kind of a chaotic scene here this morning. And as I mentioned, just those chilling words of that MDTA employee as we arrived here saying, that essentially there's not much to see because there's not much left to see. And, and that really hit home. Um, taking a look here behind me, though, still some, some kind of dark figures that you can probably make out of, of where the bridge used to be. Um, we know that this collapse, uh, or at least this, this ship, hit around 1.30 in the morning um, and that seven people were or, or potentially still currently are trying to be rescued. Um, we're also getting reports that multiple vehicles fell um, into the water. Um, uh, and, and we know that this bridge uh, snapped and collapsed after a container ship rammed into it early this morning. Um, so, yeah, definitely a lot of emergency vehicles out here, still still a lot of media. We know that the mayor has tweeted that he is aware and is en route as well. We do expect to get more information in a press conference this morning. We're going to continue to stay out here and bring you all the, the latest information as we get it. And this we'll send it back into you. Just now. happening here. As Shannon was mentioning 1.30, now 4.30. Shannon, thank you for that. Uh, again, very active. We have several crews on the scene right now trying to get a feel for exactly what's happening out there. Producer Maggie Ibarra, she's on the other side as we hop back over to Hopkins Point, right at the barricade that they've put up there. Maggie, any update on, on the situation from, from that side of things? Uh, well, I'm starting to see more and more traffic as people are probably beginning to begin their day. Um, the, the barricades are remaining the same. Walk of... Um, Fort Smallwood, and then there's one a little bit further in for some reason. I think that that road goes to 695, um, and perhaps they need to because people have been trying to drive through the first blockade. Uh, they'll drive into oncoming traffic. I watched a man run through the blockade with no coat on, and it's cold outside. So people are very determined to go wherever they, they think they need to be this morning. And hopefully they're, they're watching right now and realizing that this is a, a very serious situation. I wonder how many of them, you know, understand what's happening or just, you know, think that, you know, it's a, a crash, not realizing the extent of what's happened. You probably can't see the bridge from where you are in the darkness. No, no, you can't see from here at all. I, I, I can only I can only come to the conclusion that perhaps they don't yet know mm -hmm. that something tragic has happened. Wow. Uh, any other emergency vehicles going past you from from where you are at Hawkins Point there? Uh, yes, just um, just uh, like half a, half a minute ago, there was a, a black incident vehicle that went in along. It was escorted by some police vehicles from the city. And then uh, there have been some boats that have gone in uh, vehicles of every color, white, red, black. There's various agencies on scene at this point. Maggie, we, we thank you for your time. We're going to be checking back in. And as we took a look at that harbor shot there that our producers in the back and directors pulled up there, kind of an eerie shot right there. Normally you would see the Francis Scott Key Bridge lights in the distance there. And here this morning, uh, you just see that, that darkness as the sun comes up, certainly shedding light on, on the devastation that, that's happened there over the last few hours. A lot of videos coming into our newsroom, many people capturing this moment as it happened. That is the moment there, guys, that you see. You see the container ship on the left-hand side that large dark figure right there that is the ship that collided on the left hand side of the Francis Scott Key Bridge causing the entire bridge to then collapse again now getting word that at least seven people were were on the bridge at the time that that happened there a lot of other tweets and ex exes coming in uh, to our newsroom here this morning you heard Shannon mention that the mayor writing this saying I'm aware of and en route to the incident at the key bridge I have been in contact with the fire chief with the governor with Johnny O and the Anne Arundel County executive emergency personnel are on scene and efforts are underway which we have clearly been seeing here this 
this morning. I'll take a look at one more here. Actually, Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski actually writing uh, in as well, saying, I am aware of the situation at the Key Bridge and remain in regular communication with my fire chief and director of Mer emergency operations. I'm also in contact with the mayor of Baltimore and the Anne Arundel County executive. Rescue efforts are underway. Please pray for those impacted. And that is certainly the sentiment that, that we're seeing, especially from Olivia Schott. She was on that Fort Armistead Road situation right by the Royal Farms, where we're now seeing those concerned that they might have known someone that was on the bridge at the time, sending thoughts and prayers. In the meantime, for those of you who take this route to get to work, to get to where you need to be today, obviously, Try to avoid this situation here. You need to find an alternate route. Uh, the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel, the Fort McHenry Tunnel, those are going to be the uh, other ways that you can get across the Patapsco River here this morning. And just be mindful, more people than usual will likely be on that same route. And, and be mindful uh, of what's happening there right now. We, we heard our producer Maggie mentioning that folks are pushing through the barricades. This is an active search and rescue as as lives are being searched for here this morning. Um, it is not something to be crossed, nor something that you could even cross once you push through those barricades. So hopefully that message gets out there and the community becomes aware. Uh, we're going to be continuing our live team coverage all morning long. Just to give you an idea, guys, of the, the history of the bridge here. Uh, so many people have just come to, to know and love that bridge as part of Baltimore. We know the 695 Francis Kotke Bridge over the Patapsco River. It spanned 1.6 miles. Construction on it began in 1972. That bridge actually opened in March of 1977. Scholars believe the span crosses within 100 yards of the site where Francis Scott Key witnessed the bombardment of Fort McHenry on the evening of September 12, 1814. That battle inspired Key to write the words of the Star Spangled Banner. It is believed that he was in a ship where that bridge once stood when he was looking over at Fort McHenry, saw the bombs and started writing that Star Spangled sp Banner that we know, obviously, then becoming the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in, in his honor because of the, the place where it was. We're going to continue live updates all morning long for you as we continue to follow that breaking news. We do, though, want to bring you uh, an update on your forecast as well. Meteorologist Justin Chambers standing by. Yeah, Meg, good morning to you and good morning to everyone. Looking outside right now uh, from our Towson camera, we've got very quiet conditions here. Our temperatures that are mainly in the 30s right now, we actually are a little bit warmer this morning than where we were yesterday at this time. So low to mid 30s for Cockeysville and Towson, 31 in Rosedale. We're at 37 in Dundalk and Brooklyn Park and 35 currently in Glen Burnie and Pasadena. Some of us about seven, uh, four to five degrees above where we were yesterday. So a bit warmer with the cloud cover that has been rolling in in the overnight hours. That's setting us up for our next weather maker. So it'll be a cloudy and cool morning, mostly cloudy this afternoon. The rain is not going to roll in until tomorrow. And then we're going to have to deal with rain on Wednesday and even into early Thursday morning as well as that next weather maker starts to get rolling and in, rolling into our region. So on your morning drive, if you're going to be out for your uh, commute to work or school, temperatures will be in the mid to upper 30s for the next couple of hours. We'll eventually get to the low to mid 40s for that 9 and 10 o'clock hour again under mostly cloudy skies. And we should top out today in the low to mid 50s. We'll keep those 50s around tomorrow and into Thursday, even though that rain is coming. Those temperatures are actually going to stay a little bit on the below average side. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll take a closer look at your forecast and what we can expect for Easter weekend as well. Back to you. All right, Justin, thank you. Back out live from the Key Bridge here this morning as we continue to monitor the conditions on the roads there this morning after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. A very active search and rescue as you see those flashing lights there right now it's 442 you're watching Fox 45 early edition breaking news here take a look at your screen what you are seeing there is the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the water around 1 30 this morning again getting reports that at least seven people and several vehicles have fallen into the water below stay with Fox 45 we have exclusive live team coverage all morning long taking a live look at some of those scenes right now as we watch the search and rescue efforts underway